Hello, my name is Marcin Kubacki, I'm Chief Software Architect at Storeware, and today I'm going to tell you how to extend Ovirt UI with Backup and Recovery plugin. So, on the Vprotect example, I will show you how first to start with um, plugin development, later we'll have a few words about the Vprotect itself, and finally, how, you, how UI in Ovirt can be integrated with Vprotect so that you're able to invoke backup restore operations directly from your Ovirt environment. Obviously, we'll finalize with a demo. So first, let's start with a simple Hello World example with uh, plugin development. So in order to start uh, you, um, extending Ovirt plugins, you need few tools, obviously some Yarn, some Node.js, git to clone the repository uh, and you need to clone the repository and invoke yarn install command so this is going to create a set, set of directories and this project contains already a, an, an existing dashboard project which we are going to customize later so uh, with yarn build command you will have output stored in the this directory this is going to have a directory with compiled files and the configuration file. So UI extensions resources is a directory and UI extensions JSON is the JSON file with the configuration settings. You can notice that the same files reside also on the ref or Ovirt manager. So, so here on the left, you have, here we have a disk uh, contains of the disk directory. On the right, you have the um, contents of the um, plugins directory on the Ovirt uh, manager. So we are going to transform this into a simple Hello World example. In our case, everything with dashboard prefix or UI prefix is going to be changed, renamed to the Hello World resources, Hello World JSON, etc. Hello World Resources is a directory again with the compiled files. JSON is the configuration file. This is th these two artifacts need to be redistributed. Then you have Webpack Common and Constance JS. These two are um, required for the build process, uh, and especially there we need to change the dashboard um, dashboard into the Hello World uh, prefix in every uh, references in the code. And Hello World JS is the entry component, is the place where we enter our application. So here is the example dashboard JS. We modify it into Hello World JS, just a Hello World string uh, into div container. Now the same we are going to do with the webpack config. So we have uh, commented out the original dashboard HTML and, uh, and references to dashboard template files. We have replaced that with the hello world template and hello world HTML. And on the left, again, you have to rename the references to the dashboard JS file. Now we want to have on the left an additional menu item. So on the, the menu item requires you to specify where the, the name of this menu item, the reference, the token actually, uh, which is used uh, to route properly uh, in your browser uh, the appropriate section to your new extension, new, to your new plugin. And uh, finally, you need to provide HTML. Uh, so we, in our case, is, is Hello World HTML file. So do you change this into integration slash places JS file, and this allows you to have an additional section, additional menu item, which you click and you run your uh, plugin. So yarn build again, this time it is going to um, create hello world resources, hello world extensions JSON. These two artifacts which later we are going to copy uh, to, to the server. And in the hello world extensions JSON file, this is a quite important file because it allows you to pass additional parameters. In vProtect UI extension, we use this uh, place to add um, credentials, for instance, to uh, to access vProtect API behind the scenes. So whenever you click and play, we are going actually to pass this uh, using these parameters, pass all of the calls to the vProtect API. So once you copy the, both this directory and the file to the same places as, as you have noticed previously, um, you will have to refresh your browser. 
A uh, minor thing that to notice when you are doing exactly the same with the vProtex user interface uh, extension, you have um, you have to you need to have accepted certificate of the vProtect API. Otherwise, your browser will not allow this content to be loaded. And usually, you're going to communicate over HTTPS behind the scenes. So that's an important factor. Otherwise, you, you will not even see any error message or even button will not be loaded. So in our case, we have Hello World. And when we click it, we have Hello World HTML, we have, which we have prepared earlier. So now let's uh, have a short overview of the vProtect itself. So we know now how to extend anything in the Overt UI, but we would like to make it, uh, make it more useful. So behind the scenes, we would like to have a backup solution that is going to process all of the backup resources uh, to work with. So vProtect is a solution for multiple virtualization platforms. Today we are going to focus on the Overt base. Uh, so we've, um, we wanted to extend uh, over capabilities with the backup, agentless backup uh, capabilities uh, and allow file level restore, uh, resource or snapshot management as well. Uh, so behind the scenes we are able to store the backup in the multiple backup providers. As you can see on the, in this diagram, we support both file system based, especially one is very important, is video. This, this enables us to deduplicate data uh, using uh, video module provided by the Red Hat and uh, or storing object storage as free based or um, some others like, um, like for instance, Google Cloud Storage, like Azure. So, so it really depends on your use case. Finally, it's quite common also to see enterprise grade backup providers. So like IBM Spectrum Protect, like the Dell EMC, uh, Avamar or Networker uh, or Veritas. So this allows you to use your existing uh, infrastructure and uh, store backups um, from your Overt environment with, with uh, just a few clicks. Here you see also um, user interface of the vProtect itself. So today we are going to discuss how to extend Overt's user interface, but keep in mind that everything we are talking about you will also be able to do directly from the vProtect console. <coughs> You have to know about two main components when we talk about vProtect architecture. So first is vProtect server. This is the component where, which we are going to integrate with. So our plugin is going to communicate with the API, which is hosted by the vProtect server. And as you can see on the right, vProtect API is actually central point for many activities. Even our uh, node component, which is basically data mover. So the, the dirty job is being handled by the data movers, by the nodes. Uh, so this API is central point for also for the user interfaces for external uh, third-party systems that you would like to integrate with. In our case, it's today is going to be this uh, this new plugin that we are going to show you. Uh, application server obviously is a central point for the management. It stores the metadata of the backups. Uh, it also uh, allows you to configure, set up everything be, uh, what is being used, like the policies, etc. And it um, start initiate all of the backup operations. So the scheduler is also working on the server. So nodes basically fetch data, fetch all of the configuration from the server and uh, periodically they, uh, w when they have anything to do, they will run tasks. The, so there, are, there will be actually two tasks in, uh, invoked with each backup. One is the export process and you can see on, this, uh, on these flows we have actually two main flows, virtualization and the application integration um, flows. So virtualization flow um, exports data to the staging space and later stores, this, stores these backups into the backup provider. While the application backup integration uh, is a generic mechanism, it's going to extend your uh, Overt uh, protection with, for instance, high, uh, metadata protection of the Overt itself. You can export uh, uh, backups of your engine, engine uh, database. Um, you can also use it to, to protect your applications inside the virtual machines um, running in your Overt um, cluster, especially if you, uh, you have already existing scripts or you would like to use native commands, this is flexible solution so you're able to uh, pass your custom scripts to, the, to this mechanism and vProtect will invoke backup operations exactly the same way as you would protect your virtual machines. 
So now vProtect UI overview plugin. So you have noticed that um, uh, Hello World example was pretty much basic, but this is a crucial point to start development process. So from now on, you have a running entry point, running application, and you can use the technologies that you use usually for to develop um, your user interfaces. Uh, so in our case, we have used React and with Redux, um, we have used SCSS, and for the components, we have Patternfly Free, which is a native uh, library for the OVIRD, but we wanted to use also Prime React components to extend for, for certain specific components in the user interface. So you can see here is the dashboard view that is integrated directly in the, in the plugin. Whenever you uh, click on the dashboard section, you will say, see some everything, basically everything what you would see in the regular dashboard. And you can see also the example when you have a table with specific items. This is an example of file level restore directly from the Ovirt uh, UI. Uh, so you can notice that there is a slight difference in with these components. And overall project itself is far more complicated with, than just plain uh, Hello World example. We don't have a simple, a simple HTML. We have here a rather TypeScript. In most cases, there are some places where we still have JavaScript. Um, so there are a few packages here that you need to, to know what, what's inside. So we have a reusable, reusable component. So there are some components that are reused. So this is a central point of them. Uh, then there are some overt integrations. This is another package model, which also contains DTOs that we pass to the APIs, um, services and pages. So pages, uh, this is exactly what you see in the user interface, while services handle the logic of the communicating with the, with the vProtect um, backend. Uh, then there are some styling, uh, styling artifacts and uh, some shared, uh, shared uh, code with the utils library. Uh, everything you can find here on the GitHub page, so we can download and, uh, and build and modify this plugin uh, because it's basically open source. So there are a few differences with the components between the Patternfly free and Prime React components. We have actually uh, missed um, a date time picker. Uh, so that was one of the reasons why we have also investigated the Prime React uh, libraries. You can notice the differences, how they look and feel, but we, have, we managed to, to bind them together. So here on the left, it's a regular table that you can see in the Ovirt, um, Ovirt UI. On the right, you have Prime React um, components, uh, especially this date picker, and this is used in um, other, other aspects of the, of the interface, like the accordion things, like the drop downs, etc. So the overall integration looks like this. Whenever you click in the user interface, uh, vProtect UI plugin uh, invokes this call behind the scenes on the vProtect server API. Uh, so this API is anything like list virtual machines. Notice that the virtual machines is uh, actually a completely separate, separate um, inventory in the vProtect. We need to know about also about the VMs that no longer exist in your environment. Um, and this inventory holds all of the VMs across all of your Red Hat or Ovirt or other distribution uh, distributions uh, that you have uh, of Ovirt-based environments uh, in a single place. So you will have you will have ability to invoke backup operations from one Ovirt, um, let's say, and that's on the VMs that reside on the other uh, Ovirt uh, environment that you have. Then uh, periodically vProtect node check, checks the queue, it fetches tasks that needs to, needs to invoke and the configuration. Uh, so node is completely stateless. If you lose nodes, there is nothing actually that you need to worry about, just reinstall it and re-register. Re so node is supposed to run again without any, any issues. Now in the node, we are using Java SDK for Ovirt to invoke appropriate, uh, appropriate operations on the Ovirt itself. So now we call Ovirt API. So that is the, the flow behind the scenes. And whenever something changes, we periodically obviously see the, uh, we update statuses in the server as well. 
Here is the example of the overt SDK for Java. SDKs are available for many different languages. This is the example that we use internally to uh, get a, a specific VM. Uh, usually you need to have a connection to your overt. Uh, then you have the uh, ability to get the service. In our case, it's system service, which holds also the VM subservice. We want to get. That's the, uh, the, the way we build the get uh, request. Then the send operation actually sends this request and the result, from the result, we want to extract a VM object. So it's pretty uh, much uh, very, very, uh, it simplifies a lot the development process. Instead of using low level API calls, we uh, work with the objects all the time. So uh, for, uh, in our case, it, it boosts a lot the, the development itself and the dependency is pretty much very easy to, to add just with a plain uh, Maven uh, section in your dependency sections, right? In the POMI XML. Now it's time for the demo. So here is my Overt manager. Uh, let me log in. On the left side, you can see that there is additional VM backup section and we are going to see the dashboard. Notice that I have several um, basic statistics. I have the, uh, I have the um, protection stats, uh, I have the success rate. I have also information about my backup destinations. In our case, I have, uh, this one is a very good example. It is a video, a local file system with, which supports the duplication in this case. And I see that I have two nodes with, with their own staging spaces. Um, depending on your scenario, you will have one or more that are running in this, in this environment. So now we can click Synchronize Inventory button. This button actually sends requests to vProtect um, API, so to scan all of the hypervisor managers that are overt compatible. In our case, this is going to schedule a task and here in the virtual machines, you will see entries from, coming from all of your environments. So in vProtect user interface, you will notice that there was a task synchronization run behind the scenes that um, gathered all of the information from about your running virtual machines. These that are no longer exist are marked as non-present. So exactly the same view that you have in the Overt plugin, you also you are going to find the same VMs uh, that appear here on the list. So in our list, I would like to backup now Alpine virtual machine. I have this one here and I'm able to click backup. I would like to invoke incremental backup and store it in video file system that I have in here. So you can see that the backup task has been submitted and now you are able to go to your task console and in task console, you can see export task that has been created. Exactly the same task that you noticed here is already available. So uh, you are able to monitor also all of the operations um, directly from your overt console. Uh, export is the first phase of the backup, as I already mentioned. So first the data is going to be stored in the um, uh, vProtect staging space and later passed to the uh, appropriate backup destination. One very important aspect is that if you have file system that is shared between your backup destination and your staging space, you will not have to wait for additional copying of the data because vProtect will detect and just move data to appropriate, uh, appropriate uh, directories uh, within the same file system. You can notice that export has completed and then store task has been created. So both of them has already completed. You can notice that. And now in the virtual machine section, we can go to the details. And here we try to reflect the exact same view that you have in the overt, um, in the vProtect user interface. So you have the same statistics, you have backup sizes, you have backup time. So you can also notice that there are some differences 
uh, as far as the uh, length of the appropriate stage uh, is concerned. You can notice that the task was waiting too long in the queue or maybe your backup destination was uh, slower than usual. So exactly the same um, charts that you have here you will also have in your um, regular vProtect console. At the bottom you can notice that there was a successful backup uh, invoked um, uh, right now. There is a complete backup history here, uh, some restores that have been done previously. Uh, if you have snapshot management enabled, you are also able to track the snapshots that have been created by the vProtect. For incrementals, you will have to uh, keep one last snapshot for the future uh, future backups. It's going to be to change in the future uh, once we also uh, implement the brand new functionalities. Uh, currently, probably it's a technical uh, preview of the CBT in the Ovirt uh, itself. Uh, and uh, if you are using snapshots, you also, snapshot management capabilities, these also are going to be kept here and according to, uh, according to your policies, they will be periodically removed. Uh, we see that this is a small VM with just a single drive um, and we have some full and incremental schedules assigned uh, to the policy in which contains this VM. The same settings that you have here, you also have the option to change uh, for the VM uh, on, in the vProtect console. Uh, here you, for instance, are able to specify the snapshot management or the uh, backup um, um, policy that is, that is available, quiest, for instance, between the snap, uh, before the snapshots take place, uh, or execute even custom commands if you would like to have more application um, consistent backups being done. For instance, quiet your database before snapshots take place over SSH and later resume database just after the snapshot took place. Now, once you are, are here, you're able to restore or mount in our case, this is the way to mount and browse through the uh, complete backups, uh, complete files set in the in the backup itself. So, a restore option has exactly the same capabilities like in a regular vProtect console. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that you are able to specify which manager you would like to to use. In our case, I have uh, Ovirt, uh, I have Oracle Linux VM, and uh, I have uh, Red Hat virtualization, and I'm able to backup on one environment and restore on the other one. Uh, later, obviously, I specify which cluster, which storage I would like to import the, the VM itself and the format of the resulting uh, images. As far as the mount is concerned, um, tab is slightly different. So the backups are mounted on the nodes and exposed uh, so that you're able to browse and, uh, and uh, browse files and, and restore them either from the web interface, that also applies to the, to the plugin, or uh, expose uh, or, or directly from the node read the data just uh, with the plain SSH access. Now, you can mount file systems automatically. Uh, that is going to automatically mount all of the nested file systems. So if you have home, var, etc., they will be mounted exactly like in the original systems according to your FS tab configuration. But you also are able to specify specific file systems manually. That especially is useful with the NTFS, uh, for instance, uh, when you don't have a single root file system. Uh, or if you would like to um, just uh, include into this mount resulting mounted uh, image uh, specific uh, disks uh, without the need to restore, for instance, complete v VM. Finally, you can share these drives over iSCSI. As these are raw devices, we are able to expose them from the node and uh, you can specify which IQNs are allowed to connect. So the, we are going to configure iSCSI uh, target and allow specific initiators uh, to access this block device. This is especially useful for Windows machines because uh, if you are using file level restore and would like to preserve Windows permissions, specific Windows permissions, uh, maybe it would be better to mount it directly over iSCSI to your Windows guest, any, anywhere where you have, and later you are able to directly copy files within the Windows machine on your target system. I have already uh, one of the backups mounted in here. So here is my Alpine uh, from a few days ago. So I'm going to the details tab 
And you can see that there is a single file system here available, so uh, it, it was uh, automatically mo uh, mounted with all of the nested file systems. When I click Browse, I see the list of the files. I'm able to browse, uh, for instance, into the etc directory, and uh, I, I can download selected uh, selected uh, files directly from the backup. If it's a bigger file, then, or maybe if you have uh, hundreds of, 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 of files, maybe it would be better just to copy them directly from the node instead of uh, using your browser. Now, Whenever you uh, configure vProtect, you would like to invoke backups uh, periodically. So from the vProtect plugin, you are, uh, you are able to schedule and both virtual machine backup and snapshot management capabilities. So here I'm in the virtual environment backup uh, um, um, tab on the policy section. I can create a new uh, policy. This, uh, this policy basically you need to provide a few things. So first, obviously, the name. Uh, if you would like to re um, remove VMs that no longer exist so that they are not reported at, as non-protected. Uh, specify priority. You can have uh, different priorities for different groups of your VMs. Maybe you would like to automatically assign them to this policy. So in the overt, you have the capability to assign tags to specific environments. You can use this functionality, and, and whenever we would detect that VM matches your rules in here, this basically means both include and exclude rules. Exclude rules have higher priority. You are able to automatically assign them to this uh, to the specific policy depending on your settings. So currently this one is disabled, but you can also assign and remove if you would like to uh, have complete automatic um, management of these VMs. You also are able to specify them here um, manually if you would like, and you need to specify according to which schedules and where the, these backups needs to be stored. So you can notice that here is my video backup destination that I have uh, shown you earlier. Finally, schedules, schedules tab. Here you can notice that there are options to, to, um, to specify days of the week, uh, specific uh, occurrences of these days of the week in, within the month, or maybe just once per year you would like to back up your VM in March, for instance. So later, once you define these schedules, you are able to assign them to appropriate policies. Okay, I guess that that basically summarizes the demo. Uh, here you can find uh, additional links. I really encourage you to visit Open Virtualization Pro Portal, uh, our website also for the server and the product itself. Please download the, the plugin, uh, give us some feedback. Here is some additional contact information. You can also uh, track our activity on the uh, LinkedIn, on the, on the Twitter and other social media. Uh, so we post all the time additional movies, how to use vProtect in different scenarios. So stay tuned for the next videos and have a nice day.